It was always a great pleasure to, to come to this part of the world, even before they, were, they had the international um, status to play test cricket, which was organized by Mr. Garmi Desanarka, who unfortunately was assassinated some time ago. And um, when he came to Australia and mentioned that he was going to England to get test status for Sri Lanka, I was very pleased because during that, before that time, coming to Sri Lanka and playing, I recognized that they had some very, very good players and um, none better than the man that is sitting next to, my, next to me on my right side. Um, and therefore, I was very enthusiastic about having the opportunity to have a look at the Sri Lanka players. There were a lot of good players by the time as I started to search them out, but Arjuna Ranatonga was the name that was mentioned to me. And I remember when I first came here, they were playing a match, and I sat in the pavilion and watched him play. And to my amazement, I thought, here's a young man with a tremendous amount of talent. Tremendous amount. Apart from him, there were Vitramani, there were other players. It was you know, a really great pleasure to see that Sri Lanka had got that test status. And I was given the opportunity to look at them. Because coaching is a very important thing, and it depends on how you approach it and what you're looking for in players. I had spoken to Michael before because I knew him better than, than all the others because he was such a good player. And when he played against us, we were very, very enthusiastic about him and the way that he played. And we thought that he was as good as many test players that have been playing test cricket. And we were very impressed. And one of the things that I noticed, which I don't think that a lot of coaches do when they go to a country, is that the Sri Lankan team was well coached already. They had all the technical aspects of the game. I didn't have to go deeply into that. And then I, I, I recognized what my job was. And Sri Lankans were similar to the Indians because playing against them, I noticed that the fast bowlers had always given them trouble because they had not produced any real fast bowlers. By the time as I came to Sri Lanka, there were plenty of those around. And I will tell you, not just fast, but they were express bowlers. So my job was to brainwash the Sri Lankan young players that if they really want to go into test cricket and become successful, that they had to be able to play against the fast bowling attack. Spinners were no problem because their technique was there. There were technical aspects about them that I had to look at. But as far as the grooming and the groundwork was done, it was done by Van Silvers. So I didn't really have a very tough job because I had a Santa Domel in those days was as quick as any of those bowlers. So I had at least one fast bowler among the group that I could work with, and he was quick. All I had to do is to work with them and to make sure that those ingredients were going to be placed in the right place. And I remember when I left here in 1983, of course I had to go through the back roads. <laughs> <laughs> I said after that, that within 10 years that Sri Lanka would be winning some world championship. And in yes. 1996, they won the World Cup. And that I felt very proud about because I can see the ability of the players. And I am not surprised that today that they have produced so many great players and that they have gone from strength to strength because the foundation is here and the players were here. And I'm so happy to be back here today to witness some more of the cricket against the West Indies, which they have started so well. 
We are all in recession. We are all rebuilding. But some seem to be doing it faster than others. All the other countries seem to be doing it more, fa more faster, faster than in the West Indies because we seem to be still a little bit in the background. But I think that we have got a lot of good players, a lot of players in the making. I think they just need a bit more time, and I am sure that you will see West Indies, if things go right and they're handled in the right way and has given the right ingredients, I am quite sure that West Indies cricket will blossom again. It might take a little longer than Sri Lanka's. Have you seen already? You have won the first test. That's your first test, storage development and improvement. Very honored and uh, thankful to the uh, uh, cricket board for uh, suggesting uh, my name. I mean, to be linked with uh, somebody as great as uh, Gary is uh, beyond my wildest dreams. I mean, uh, he's been a really fantastic cricketer. He's been, in my view, the greatest all-round cricketer that uh, the world has produced. As far as I'm concerned, it's, uh, it's not really the, the runs, the wickets, and the catches that he's taken. That's all in statistics. But it's the manner in which he played the game. I mean, he's, he was exemplary on the field. It was great just seeing him walk out to bat, just seeing him walk between overs. You got the impression that, well, this is the epit epitome of an athlete and a cricketer. And uh, Sir Gary has always played the game in the best traditions. Uh, I think if we had uh, more of his ilk, there would not have been any uh, need for match referees and third umpires. I think the game would have gone on without any problem. Besides his ability as a cricketer, I think he's been a fantastic person. Uh, Mr. Tisera, I know it's almost 50 years ago, but can you uh, recall some of the memories in that famous 1967 match? Well, the memories are firstly that uh, I think the West Indies, there were three hundreds in that game. I think uh, Sir Gary, Clive Lloyd and Butcher, I think it was. Uh, from our point of view, I think the highlight was the last wicket partnership of 110 between Ian Pearis and Neil Chamugam. And that uh, took us up to 400, and I think the West Indies got 550 for five or something. And then 160 for three we got. So, I mean, from our point of view, it was a, it was a good match.